lost in paradise But I can't find my way back home to you I'm drifting, I'm lost out here Running out of our Focus, there we go so what you guys see me doing here, I'm doing a few eccentric holds, which essentially just means that I'm holding it at the top because that's where most people struggle with pull-ups. So what you're gonna do is practice a few times a week. I just did the first set was just as many as I can do without assistance and it was just the three and the third one was a struggle. The next one I added this is an assisted pull-up machine. You can use a band or something like that or like a friend to help support your feet and just hold at the top and then slowly lower yourself down because that's going to help you get really strong at that like top pulling movement at the top. So that is what I'm doing to help progress in pull-ups. video with a full abs and cardio routine in there but right now I'm gonna be doing five sprints all out intensity I was gonna use the prowler machine the sled Goldstein recently redid their outside section where they have the sleds and I love doing sleds for sprints but they said that they were gonna put it outside right now but it's not out there and I don't really feel like waiting for it so we're just gonna do some sprints on the treadmill so my favorite thing to do for cardio sprints is essentially just go until it hurts so for me I go all out intensity. I'll probably put the incline up to about eight and I'll put the speed up to about 11. So if you're a beginner and you're not yet a speed demon, <laughs> don't try to put it at 11 and then fall off the treadmill. Not to say that that's something that is a bad thing. Like if you're just starting and you're not and you're not yet at the speed, I've been a sprinter for like a lot of my life. I did soccer and stuff like that. So I really like doing fast sprints and I'm really good at it, which makes me feel like happy, but I can always improve. When I first started, I definitely could not do that high of a speed. So if you're first starting out, don't stress about it because everyone starts somewhere. I started somewhere, professional athletes started somewhere, everyone starts somewhere. So for purposes, just put it up to something that makes it really hard for you. You, not me, it makes it hard, really hard for you. That's, I'm telling you guys what I do, but whatever makes it really hard for you, 15 to 20 seconds. What you're gonna do next? is either jump off and make sure you grab onto the side of the treadmill and jump off safely <laughs> and get off on the side right after you do your hard sprint. But jump off and stay there for about a minute to a minute and a half. That's how long it should take you to get your heart rate back down to normal after you do a all out intensity hit interval. Do those four to five, to six to seven to eight times, even 10 times, but start off small and then add as you go. So I'm starting off small, I'm starting off with five and then I'll add intervals or and or sessions as I go throughout this cut. But right now I'm just starting off small, five intervals, 15 to 20 seconds, all out intensity, a minute to a minute and a half rest, go. One thing I forgot to mention, get some really badass music that makes you want to sprint hard AF. Playing some right now. what that weight is like with weight on it. <laughs> One of them off. Okay.
literally looks so ratchet right now, but when your protein shake matches your shirt, you're kind of cool. Just kidding, I'm not. I never make protein shakes, but it sounded really good. I told you guys in the last video, yogurt, I said it was summer. It's not summer, it's spring, but it's warm here. Yogurt is delicious and protein shakes. I usually have something colder in the summer when, when it's a little bit warmer or in the spring or whatever. And then I'll opt for like a one carb waffle or something more warm in the winter based off of the weather. And this is absolutely delicious, so. It's a scoop of protein, a cup of almond milk, one of those Carb Master yogurts, which is nine protein, nine grams of protein, five grams of carbs, and two grams of fat or something rather. So this probably has a solid like 10 grams of carbs in this, but I'm saving them for dinner later. But this is absolutely so satisfying. I am just getting a little bit more packing done, but Brian and I are cooking dinner. We're having some sweet potatoes and ground turkey burger. I am gonna track everything because I'm home and I can and I'm not stressed about it. And I know a lot of you guys might be asking, why are you tracking? You should just enjoy a meal. You shouldn't have to track because you're not doing that serious of a cut. When it comes to that, I always say that like, if I, if I have a goal and I can be on point and it doesn't stress me out, like this does not bother me at all to just like cook the food, weigh it, eat it. Like it just really doesn't like resonate as like a stressful thing. Something that makes me feel like I'm ruining the enjoyable time with the people that I'm around. I will do it, but if it does, then I just won't stress about it. And I've gone out to eat like every single night this weekend and I've just like left enough room and estimated my meal and I'm totally fine. And you can still stay on track without tracking your food at all, guys. It's not what I'm saying at all. Like you don't have to even bother tracking your food, but when you do, and for me, I struggle making progress even if I, if I do track everything. So I wanna kind of like be really good Good, or so you can say, especially because it's like week one, week two of my cut. It's just getting into week two now. And I would rather be like better in the beginning and then actually make some progress and then kind of give myself a little bit of leeway. But if I just start week one and then I'm like, it's fine, I don't have to tr do anything or I don't have to stay on point, that kind of just sets the tone for the rest of the 12 weeks that I have planned. And I do want to reach a goal. He's cutting up the sweet potatoes in like the tiniest little pieces. I just like got in the zone with it. <laughs> and I don't know like, what to do. It just, it just happens. <laughs> just happens. <laughs> Putting them in the oven with, it's like, I did like half a serving of coconut oil and I just melted it. And then we're gonna like spread it all over the sweet potatoes with a little bit of seasoning. Cook those and they'll be like all crispy, crunchy, and delicious. But we should put cinnamon on them. Yeah? Oh yeah. And the seasoned salt. The seasoned salt too is really good. So that is my two cents on how I kind of am planning my my cut, like my, my macro tracking. It is a lifestyle cut. I'm not doing it for a prep, so I don't have to be very, very strict, but I still want to be when I can and when I like know that I actually should. I feel like people kind of take advantage of the fact that like you're doing a lifestyle cut and it's not that serious and you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. Like you don't have to be that strict. And I agree with that to an extent. And I know that there's like plenty of times where I'm not gonna track and I'm still gonna make progress because I'll like estimate or whatever, but like, I still want to stay on point, and you should want to too. Anyways, I'm gonna show you guys what we're having for dinner. Who's this fucking guy that comments on my videos? <laughs> Holy shit, and we are in business. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is like one bite compared to his. This is like four ounces of meat and one slice of cheese, and his is like the rest. <laughs> it actually was. Yum, this looks so good. I also made some peppers and mushrooms, and this is 170 grams of sweet potato, four ounces of turkey, taco seasoned ground turkey, and one slice of provolone cheese. It is the morning of London, and I'm so excited. I just finished having a meeting with Carrie and Dustin to go over email list stuff, and then podcasts, YouTube, content stuff, everything that's gonna be going on in the next like two weeks immediately, and then we scheduled out a lot of stuff for the next like three months too, so we just did that. I wanna talk to you guys a little bit more about what I packed and how I go about packing for a long trip especially. Um, one thing that I always do, I bring a travel pillow. I use a travel pillow for my lower back, not for my neck, because when you have space between your lower back, it makes it really difficult to, there's like so much room, especially when you're like slouched down and you're trying to sleep and your back is all rounded and stuff. It's really nice to have something push up against that so it relieves the pressure. I have this entire backpack here. This is a bodybuilding.com backpack. I have passport and stuff immediately in here if I need to grab it. I have some chargers, headphones in here. I'll actually put that in my other bag. 
I'll show you that in a sec. And here is literally all my camera equipment. This is a, a carry-on bag. It's not a check bag because if you check stuff, that's super important. <laughs> like everything in the check bag is important. However, uh, my camera equipment, podcast equipment, and my drone are all in here. And this is the carry-on. So I always have this, it's always with me. I'm also gonna take this book in my other bag. I have two books in here. I brought my food scale. I don't know how much I'll be using it, but I'm not worried about it. I brought earplugs and a sleep mask for the flight tonight. Sunglasses, stuff like that. And that's that bag. So this is all stuff that I'm gonna need immediately. And here is really just clothes. In here, I have socks, samples of supplements for myself. In here, I have sports bras, so it's all separated. In this bigger pouch, I have all my gym stuff and like bigger things. Like I also have food in here, so I ordered some bite meals, sweet potatoes, green beans, and then some chicken. And if this were me separately, I would pre-cook all this stuff and bring it with me. I used to do that all the time. I brought some hats, curling irons and such in here, and gym equipment. So I don't take my, any of my, my belts or my squat shoes or anything when I'm traveling. They take up a lot of room, a lot of space, and a lot of weight. So I will try to make this weigh as little as possible so I don't have to pay an overage fee, but I'm gonna, only because it's a lot of stuff. I brought a jacket, because apparently it's cold in London. Um, I'm also, I'm going to London, and then I go back from London to DC, drive across the country, so I have to have stuff for like two weeks, lots of different climates. Sandals, heels just in case we go out, slippers, also boots and two pairs of sneakers under there. This is toiletries, um, lotions, toothbrush, hair stuff, face stuff, wash, all that crap. Makeup is in here as well. I brought rice cakes, I brought some oatmeal, I brought some bite meals, cookies, and stuff. It's basically like taking some protein bars with me. Some true ZMA, I'm gonna take that for the flight because yes, but yeah. This bag is where all the stuff that I'm gonna need immediately is. So this is gonna be the one that goes under my seat. I have Barbell Brigade jacket just because it's really warm and comfortable. No matter what it looks like, it's so warm and comfortable. Chargers, oh, I have to get my cell phone charger. Do, 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 do. Cell phone charger. Me and you. Cell phone charger, whoop, we'll go in here. Basically just water, careful with the water because liquids, electronics don't mix, so just be very careful. I'm actually gonna drink this entire thing before I even get on my flight. It's 1.46 right now, my flight is at, I have to be there at three, so I'm good on time, but I'm gonna drink this entire thing before the flight because you don't take liquids on a flight. I also brought my P Science Shaker Cup, there's nothing in here right now. I think I have some headphones in here. Anyway, there's headphones in there, laptop, meals. Two meals for the flight. What I have left, I'm just taking. Guys, these are so easy and convenient for travel. I know a lot of you guys. Oh, I don't know why that was so zoomed the whole time. Now you can see stuff. But I think it's very convenient to just have food readily available, whether you're either meal prepping it or getting it from a meal prep service. I have two bite meals all ready to go here, and these are gonna be my next two meals of the day, and that's it for the rest of the night. They also provide food on an international flight, so I may or may not be getting food on the flight. But I'm just gonna be prepared anyway, just in case. And I will save the meal for tomorrow if I don't need it for tonight. Your plugs book, gonna work on the plane, and I'll see you guys in London. Finish.